Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's Wisdom Wednesdays. I am Petrina Wisdom, your Fresh Start Specialist and CEO Founder of Mindful Living, Inc. And today we're going to be talking about awakening vulnerability. You know, we live in a world where it's really portrayed as strength to kind of suck down your emotions and be strong, whether you're a man or a female, you know, we have this uh, idea of what strength looks like. And through my journey, I've learned, sometimes the hard way, that it there's actually an extreme amount of strength and power in vulnerability. And so I really want to kind of jump into that today. I know that a lot of my friends, a lot of my peers are going through major shifts in their lives as we step fully into our greatness and really become the powerful forces that we're meant to be here on earth in order to help and heal other people. And so uh, it's been such a common thread amongst some of my clients, my peers, my friends, that I thought today would be the perfect day to um, address that. So here we go. Let's jump into our three tips for powerful awakening of vulnerability. So our first powerful tip for today for awakening vulnerability is don't take it so seriously, okay? I just kind of learned this one yesterday, really. Uh, energy shifts and breakthroughs are happening in our lives every single day. And sometimes there's a lot of fear that comes up around those changes, shifts, and breakthroughs. Uh, they're bound to come up. So give yourself permission to play in the vulnerability. You know, I've been having what I kind of coined yesterday as uh, meltdown Mondays the last maybe four weeks. And it's because I've been experiencing, you know, just so much love, so much connection, so much opening up of my heart, which was a conscious decision for me to do months ago, but it's really like gushing now. And I'm starting to feel more than I have in years. And with that comes fear, you know, up comes the abandonment issues and, and some of the self-worth issues that I believed that I had settled in the past, but that they start to bubble up and, and, and look, you know, they're like looking for my attention and trying to sna snatch me back into that old story. So it's been really interesting to just sit in that and allow myself to cry, allow myself to purge and uh, really move through the pain and the fear of vulnerability rather than allowing it to overtake me and snatch me back uh, to being who I was. Um, so again, give yourself permission to just play in the vulnerability. Two. Powerful tip number two for today is decide which level of vulnerability you wanna play at. All right, so I've been processing. I'm like, okay, why am I going through these things? Why am I feeling this way? Yeah, it's new and, and I'm allowing it. Um, but what I realized is that there's different levels of vulnerability. So before I had been vulnerable, but it was more of like a rebellious or even protective vulnerability. Like I'm going to throw this out there so everybody knows it so that they can't throw it back at me. And now I've moved into this very powerful vulnerability, which is more soft and surrendering. And that's when that fear comes up, right? <laughs> because those, those uh, old issues and wounds are still there, but they're healing. And so it's really um, soothing over those, those, those feelings and those fears in a very uh, strong, confident way, but from within and allowing yourself to move through that so that you can get to the other side of that pain. Um, so those, those cycles of vulnerability, excuse me, those levels of vulnerabilities will flow in cycles. So maybe sometimes you will be more in your rebellious, protective vulnerability, and other times you'll shift to that more soft, surrendering vulnerability. I think it's really important for us to just own, right? Be aware and own wherever it is that we are and allow ourselves to cycle in and out of it. So gauge where you are and then decide when and how much more you want to push that comfort level of your vulnerability. So I think that this really plays into um, step three of my six step wisdom system, which is sacred self care. So playing with vulnerability and allowing yourself to really release and purge and to let go of all of the things, all of the judgment, all of everything that you feel within yourself, that is a part of your sacred self care. 
right? Allowing yourself to truly be who you are and to stand in that no matter how scary it is. And our last powerful tip today is know who to go to when. You know, it's so funny because when I developed my six-step wisdom system, I had no idea that I would actually be living through all those steps on a consistent basis and just kind of flowing through each one and revisiting them. But you know what? I believe that, again, there's level there's levels of vulnerability. We, we go back through those cycles, and that's exactly how it seems to be working with my six-step wisdom system. It's like always going back, using that system as a foundation for my life, and then also supporting my clients in moving through that system so that when things come up, you go back to that system and say, oh, okay, I'm back at step one. I really need to figure out again or reconnect with who I am. Or, oh, okay, I'm, I'm at step two. I have some limiting beliefs and, and habits that are not serving me that I really need to go back and take a look at, you know, or where I'm at right now. Oh, okay, this vulnerability thing that fits right into my sacred self-care step. I need to take care of me. I need to learn how to protect my little girl. So, so powerful tip number three, knowing who to go to when. This is all a part of sacred self-care as well. So in your vulnerable moments, it's so important for you to know who in your life has the ability to hold space for you and to allow you to release those feelings, those tears, whatever it is, the anger without judgment. See, a support team in business and in personal is so very important, but you have to know who to go to. And I think that a lot of us don't realize, and I really have, this is a new learning for me that I'm passing on to, to uh, my clients and students and friends, is that there's, there's different people in your lives for different reasons, right? We have our students, which would be my clients, my kids, right? <laughs> Whoever else that I'm sort of leading the way for. Um, I have my peers, my peer group, which are my friends, my fellow entrepreneurs, healers, uh, that sort of thing. And then, what, and then I have my mentors, which is my coaches and um, spiritual leader that I go to, my earth angels that I call them. So you need to know who fits in what category. And it's not to say that you're not going to learn from your student because I learn so much from my students or my clients. Um, on a daily basis, but it's just kind of knowing where each person fits and who to go to for what. Huge lesson that I've been learning that, again, I'm here to pass on everything that I learn and master on to you. Um, I just want to give an acknowledgement to my really good friend, Jolie Pinkerton, who did a, a Sacred Goddess event this weekend uh, with a beautiful woman named Crystal who put it on. And I just want to acknowledge her because she spoke on vulnerability and it was so beautiful to see her standing there in her power, in, in her sweetness, and really delivering um, a powerful message from her heart. And it just confirmed to me that vulnerability is where it's at. It's not always easy. Uh, it's not always pretty. Lord knows I've given the ugly cry a lot over the past month. But fortunately, I have attracted people into my life that are able to hold that space. And now my biggest lesson and what I want to invite you to do is to learn how to accept it, learn how to let it go, you know, let it flow in, let it flow out, and, um, and really just know that you're never alone know that you're never alone. And so um, I'll, I'll share with you that, that my, my newest lesson is learning how to reach out and actually ask for the help. Because it's a lot easier if someone shows up and says, hey, how can I support you? It's in those dark times when you're feeling sad, when you're feeling alone, being able to actually reach out to your lifelines and ask for help. And, and I really believe that's a higher level of vulnerability that I personally am working towards. So thank you for sharing time and space with me today. That's going to wrap up our Wisdom Wednesdays for today. Um, visit my website, patrinawisdom.com. Uh, connect with me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, you name it, I'm all over there, Patrina Wisdom. And if you have specific questions, comments, feedback, whatever it is, I am here to serve. Give me an email, coaching at patrinawisdom.com. And I would love to get to know you better and uh, learn more about you and see how I might support you. As a matter of fact, my uh, coaching program is opening up on May 28th. The enrollment for that is still open. I have a few spots left, and I would love to have a conversation with you about that. So visit patrinawisdom.com forward slash coaching, 
and see what's available there for you, okay? I will see you next week, same time, same place, right here on your Wisdom Wednesdays. Namaste.